One of the stories that is very, very high in terms of the status of this man, Abu Ubaidah Amir ibn al Jarrah, was that in Medina Munawwara, one of the groups of the Christians had come through to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Najran. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by them saying, please send one of you with us to come back with us to our area in order to teach us and in order to be a judge in whatever disputes we may have and so on. So Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this was at the first part of the morning. He said, come back to me in the evening and I will send with you a man who is strong and he is the trustworthy of my ummah. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says, I heard this and I was very interested. I was not interested in being sent, but I was interested in being known with these qualities that were made mention of. So I was early for Salat al-Dhuhr and I sat there with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very near him. And then after Salah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked to his right and he looked to his left and he says, I put my neck up so that he could see me, you know, that Umar is here, subhanallah. And then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, where is Abu Ubaidah, subhanallah. And then he appointed Abu Ubaidah and he told him, go with these people, be just and fair, teach them goodness. And remember, you are a person who I consider the trustworthy of this ummah. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu says that as much as I knew that yes, subhanallah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loves us all. But it was on that day that I learned the credentials of this man, Abu Ubaidah Amir ibn al-Jarrah. Abu Ubaidah Amir ibn al-Jarrah. He was a man who had accepted Islam at the age of approximately 28. And he was a man who was very good looking. One of the three who was extremely good looking from amongst the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whereby they actually say it was so pleasant to look at him and to talk to him because not only was he good looking, but he had good character and conduct as well from the very beginning. He was known as Abu Ubaidah, but his first name was actually Amir and his father's name was Abdullah. So although he was commonly known as Abu Ubaidah, Amir ibn al-Jarrah, he was actually Amir ibn Abdullah ibn al-Jarrah. And he was known as the trustworthy from amongst my ummah. He became Muslim a day after Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And I'll tell you what happened is because he was close friends with Abu Bakr radiallahu an, the second day after the Islam of Abu Bakr, he came to him and he told him about uh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Abu Ubaidah said to him, take me to that person. When he came and when he heard and when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited to him the Quran and when he heard the ayat and immediately accepted Islam That's and with him and Sayyidina Abu Bakr, the likes of Uthman bin Mad'un, the likes of Arkham bin Al-Arkham, all of them came into the fold of Islam. One of the things why he was called a mean, trustworthy and reliable Look at his qualities. Amr bin al-As mentioned a beautiful narration about them. He says that there are three people in the Quraysh. When you say to them something, they will never belie you. They will never say that you are lying or it's false. And when they speak to you, they will never deceive you. Who are those three? Sayyidina Abu Bakr. The second was Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah. And the third person was Sayyidina Uthman. Obviously, we know yeah. the modesty of Sayyidina yeah. Uthman radiallahu anh, that was admired by the angels. Yes, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, may Allah be pleased with him, in describing Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, I've never ever seen anybody who had a more pious heart than this man. A person who sought the life of the hereafter more than this man. A person who was more sincere to the general Muslims more than this man. This companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was one of those who were the early companions at the time when Islam was facing a lot of persecution. Abu Ubaidah was one of them. He left to Ethiopia. After this, he came back again to Mecca and made a hijrah, emigrated with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to Medina. In Medina, Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah, he took part in the first battle, the Battle of Badr. 
in this battle of, of, of Badr, uh, which took place. Now, as we see mentioned in the, uh, in, in the starting, Abu Ubaidah was a very brave person. Okay. And he was known amongst his tribes and amongst the, 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 the people of Mecca to be a brave person. So when he was fighting in this battle, the disbelievers, no one wanted to attack him. They knew that it's, it's a lost battle. Yeah. But his father was searching for him in the battlefield. And his father had made a vow that if he finds his son, he is going to kill him. Because obviously his acceptance of Islam had angered right. his family. Yeah. Right. It had right. disgraced his, his, his family. Right. Right. And uh, when Abu Ubaidah saw his father, he tried to move away. But his father kept on pursuing him. Subhanallah. Until it came to such an extent where his father was like a barricade. His father had blocked him from attacking the disbelievers. And in that motion, he struck a blow and thus caused the death of his yes, father. Sir. But when we come to understand that this was a battle of truth and falsehood. At the battle of Uhud, he did very well. He was one of those who had stayed with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and tried to defend him to the degree that when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was injured and he had gashes on his cheeks, on his face sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there were pieces of the weapon that had remained in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's face and Abu Ubaidah was the one who took these little shrapnel pieces out of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam's face. It is well known that he was the one who took so much care that whilst he was removing them with his teeth, he actually lost two of his teeth. This is how severe it was. And this is how careful this man was when dealing with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. We should know in the time of uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he had sent him on many expeditions. There was one expedition that was known as Junood al kapt There was a, a caravan of the Quraysh that was coming towards Mecca or Medina. And the Prophet wasallam sent Abu Ubaidah under the leadership of about 300 men from the Ansar and Muhajirin in yes. order to protect the caravan. When they reached there, they halted at a certain place towards the southeast coast. And uh, after about 15 days, they ran out of food. So Abu Ubaidah said to his men that collect all the food that you'll have and bring it forward to me, whatever is left. And there was only a bunch of dates which was left with them. So every day we would give each man one date. So they would suck on the date and yeah. drink some water <laughs> and then put the date away. So someone asked him that how did you all manage to suck on a date and drink some water? Jabir said, when the date finished, then we knew what was the value of that one, of the sucking of the date and drinking some of the water. We even missed that. And then <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through his infinite mercy, uh, sent to them forward. They came forward from the, from the sea, uh, a, a very uh, a massive fish. And that for 18 days, they were eating from the meat of the fish. They had so much of meat left over that they took with them to Medina, where they gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam some of that. This was the same man after the death of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu met with Sa'd ibn Ubada and the others in Saqifa to Bani Sa'idah to appoint the leader. The first person that Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu felt initially that this man would be our leader was Abu Ubaidah, Amir ibn al-Jarrah. He stretched his hand and he said, Oh Abu Ubaidah, stretch your hand. Let me pledge allegiance to you as the successor of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because wallahi, these ears have heard Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on more than one occasion call you the trustworthy of the ummah. So indeed, you will be entrusted with successorship. And Abu Ubaidah, Amir ibn al-Jarrah, immediately turned it down. And he says, I will never ever put myself in front of a man who was asked to lead the prayers during the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is when Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu agreed, and they turned to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu, and they pledged allegiance to him. Then at the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, something unique happened. One of the leaders of the Muslim army was known as Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu. And so this Khalid ibn al-Walid was such a powerful warrior that he used to win all the battles. 
So what happened is the people started feeling that Khalid ibn al-Walid is very high in rank, raising him higher than he actually was. That was a fear of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. So fearing this, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu sent Abu Ubaidah Amir ibn al-Jarrah to replace Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu. When Abu Ubaidah arrived, he found that Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu was busy in a battle. So he decided to wait until the battle was over. So he waited when the battle was over. He went with utmost humility. He met Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu and he presented him the letter. Khalid ibn al-Walid read the letter and he said, Oh Abu Ubaidah, why didn't you give me this letter earlier? As soon as you came, you could have taken the reins and I would have stepped aside. He said, Oh Khalid, I did not want to disturb you. You were very busy. And at the same time, he said, it is not the power or the kingdom of this world that we want, nor do we work in order to build our world. We are all working in order to build the life after death. And we are all brothers for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So amazingly, Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu handed over the leadership to this man and the man got up Abu Ubaidah Amir ibn al-Jarrah. Now he was the new leader of the army and he decided to address the people. What did he say? He said, oh my people, this Khalid ibn al-Walid is such a high ranking companion that I have heard Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say Khalid is indeed a sword from amongst the swords of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As for me, I am a simple Muslim from Quraysh. And he says, Wallahi, no matter what color you are, if you are better than me in piety, it is my wish to be in your skin. And this is what will make us better. So in Asham, in the region where he was, up in the northern part of the Arabian Peninsula, Abu Ubaidah became known as the leader there. So Umar goes to Jabiyah. When he reaches Jabiyah, he says to Abu Ubaidah, he said, Abu Ubaidah, take me to your house. I want to see your house. So Abu Ubaidah radiallahu anhu says, Oh, Mir al-Mu'mini, why do you want to go to my house? When you go to my house, the only thing which will happen is that you will rinse your eyes, meaning you will cry. Omar says, no, let me go to your house. He goes to the house of Abu Ubaidah and it's a little mud hut. A little mud hut. Omar enters and he looks around. And he says to Abu Baidah, do you have anything to eat? And Abu Baidah radiallahu anhu brings some crumbs and some water. And Umar looks at the crumbs and the water and he says, Abu Baidah, nothing else besides this? And Abu Baidah radiallahu anhu says, Omir al it's enough to get me on to the other side. It's enough to get me to the other side. And Umar begins to cry. And he said, Abu Baidah, I swear by Allah, the dunya had changed all of us besides you. At the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, a plague broke out in what we would call today Jordan, where a lot of Muslims had died and a lot of members of the army were dying one after the other. And the news got to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu. So he wrote to Abu Ubaidah, Amir ibn al-Jarrah, and he told him, look, I have a need for you very urgently and I want you to come to me as soon as possible. If my letter gets to you in the morning, do not let the evening come without having jumped onto your conveyance and started your journey. And if you get the letter by night, do not let the morning come before you have jumped onto your conveyance and come towards me. I am issuing you this instruction. Now Abu Ubaidah got the instruction and he told the people around him, I've understood what Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu wants. He wants to take me out of this place where there is a plague so that I can be saved. But Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has instructed us not to leave a place where there is a plague. So I have to write back to Umar to say that as much as you are the Amir, as much as I have to obey you when you are saying come back, but I've understood what you want. And I want to tell you that the statement of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes above yours. So he stayed in that area. He was caught in the plague and he passed away rahmatullahi alayhi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him. So Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, when he got the letter, he began to cry. So the people around him asked him, are you crying? Because Abu Ubaidah has passed away. He said, Abu Ubaidah has not yet passed away. But I know from his letter that very soon, perhaps he too will pass away in the same plague. And then the news came confirming what Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was worried about. And Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu cried so much. He cried so much. And later on, 
they heard of what happened on the deathbed of this man, Abu Ubaidah, Amir ibn al-Jarrah. He says, when Abu Ubaidah, Amir ibn al-Jarrah was on his deathbed, he called the army and the people who were with, and he told them, I am going to give you some pieces of farewell advice. Listen to them carefully and stick to them and you will always be in goodness. If you understand and listen to this advice, your prayer, your zakah, fast correctly in the month of Ramadan and even your extra fasts. And remember when you are giving charity, give over and above that which is compulsory. Make sure that if Hajj is compulsory upon you, you fulfill it and ensure that you frequent the house of Allah. And then he continued, he says, learn to guide one another, advise one another. Do not feel bad when people guide you and when they advise you. And then he continues to say, be genuine to your leaders and do not cheat your leaders. Wallahi, if you have been given a thousand years to live, there will come a day when you still will have to die. He says, the most intelligent from amongst you are those who are most conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The most intelligent from amongst you are those who are conscious of the day that they will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was Abu Ubaidah, Amir ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu an, Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu turned to him and he was the one who had led Salatul Janazah on this man and he told the people we have lost such a great man, make dua for him, ask Allah to have mercy on him.